Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up on this Friday, the literal best of all days. This week, we're doing something special. What I set out to do a few weeks ago was start breaking my videos up into more coherent sections instead of just like part two, part three, uh, you know, start starting off wherever I left off. Now what I'm trying to do is organize everything. Now that my Patreon page has allowed me a little bit of breathing room, what I do now is I take the first part of the video and the focus of that will be the simple tricks, the five simple tricks to getting that model to that place, utilizing all the next level techniques, airbrush, washes, all the little secret tricks, and then a video about the details. It's the more advanced elements as it were, how to get that model to the next level. Sometimes I might throw a third video in there as I did with the Mephiston video because the Mephiston was a very detailed model. But this week, just a two-parter. We're gonna be painting the Nurgle Spawn. It's an awesome counts as Nurgle Spawn, and Nurgle Spawn are one of the most underrated units in the Chaos Codex. I've won many tournaments using two squads of Nurgle Spawn led by uh, sorcerers, you know, popping off Shroud from Psychic Powers, making them almost impossible to deal with. You know, when you have a couple of units coming across the table that have, you know, five models with three wounds in each that are that two up cover saves and a ton of six, it's really difficult to stop them. Enough about the tactics. We have a whole other section of the Long War for that. Let's talk about the Long War uh, Kickstarter. That is happening very soon. As you've seen in season two of the Long War Battle Reports, the quality has gone up. New benchmarks and sound engineering, everything. The thing is, is that all this new equipment we're using is on loan. Now that we know what we like and now that we know what we want, we can narrow the focus of our Kickstarter so we can get some of that money in. But obviously we have all sorts of cool rewards, all those templates and t-shirts and dice that everyone's been asking for. So don't forget to check that out because we're going to be hitting you guys up very soon with all the information on that. And lastly, Patreon. Thank you guys for finding me on Patreon. I got a few shout outs to do. Jeremy, Jugger G, Michael, James, Dan, Cuban. Thank you guys for being my most recent patrons. Obviously, you go over to patreon.com. You can check out the link right here. I have all sorts of interesting things on gifts and prizes and shout outs there. Thank you for taking a look at it. Anyway, let's jump right into this tutorial. Let's do this thing. Painting Nurgle Spawn. Leading off, jumping out the gate with Menoth White Base. This is a P3 base color. These are some of the best paints in the game. They go on one coat smooth, even with these lighter colors like these bones. And as you can see, this bone white is perfect for these horns, teeth, the toenails, any kind of skulls. Uh, P3, they're just such a good value. You can like almost cut them 50-50 with water for the airbrush. Get two for the price of one. Can't say enough good things about these guys. They have some of the brightest colors and some of the strongest foundation pigments. As you can see, uh, just going through, hitting these plate toads, hitting all that stuff that needs to be bone on them. Uh, it, like I said, it's just amazing how bright and one coat this, this formula is. I love the P3. I, I swear after this is the last time I'll mention how much I love them, but I love them so hard. <laughs> and these little frogs, you know, after we laid all that green on them, I mean, it's hard to see even kind of what's left. But once you start picking out some of the details and doing the work, because remember, the airbrush is only there to bring to bring you back into the fold in the late game. So we're taking Flash Kits Yellow, one of my favorite yellows, and we're going to paint the eyeballs of these guys. It's just a fun color. We also kind of use yellows in some of the dry version of their skin, so it's a really good complementary color. Come through real quick, hit all their eyeballs. Might need two coats. Going back to the Gangster Gumbo. Our brown, green, and black wash. These are all GW washes mixed together. And we're going to go through and start washing some of these things that we've done from the last video and some of the things we just did right now. Go through, hit these pustules, uh, go, you know... And this is funny because these were pink, you know, and red, but you can see how good of a wash uh, and, and how much work this wash is doing on those little sores. We're going to go through and we're going to do the wash on their teeth, on their toenails, uh, you know, anything that we just did, even the eyeball. 
it's just you gotta get your game your wash game on lock and look how much work this wash is doing on that horn can't say enough good things about gw wash like p3 might have some amazing pigments and gw definitely has the wash game on lock i've tried every wash from every company none of them are as good as gw's coming through uh on one of these other guys was all mouth and we're even gonna wash all that pink and all that red that we laid down with the airbrush from uh the previous video which was five simple tricks to paint in there we're gonna slather the wash on let it find the recesses let it really just start bringing out the detail on all the little elements here you can just i mean it's it's almost like cheating in some in some ways like i feel like all the time that i've been painting models before wash came out i was really wasting a lot of time because before we had washes with inks and they were nowhere near as good as wash some companies were experimenting with washes but they just weren't as good the technology is just so much more so here you go check out these frogs the wash is drying you can really start seeing the details on these guys so we're going to jump into our next detail color we're going to take the vallejo model uh this is not an airbrush color but i love this pink and we're not airbrushing right now so it doesn't matter and I'm gonna start highlighting, mixing that pink a little bit with scarlet red uh, in some situations. Right now I'm just showing you what, how electric the pure pink looks over uh, the red with the wash. Give you some of those hyper highlights uh, in the mouth. Cause I love how the reds and the pinks offset with the green. Cause obviously green and red are complementary your colors. And if you do green in different variations of different hues and values and you do the same thing with the red, you're gonna get the maximum complement. And now here's that scarlet red tech so now we're going to come back with that scarlet red mix it with some of the pink this is kind of a free form more advanced blending technique go through and find any areas in the mouth that you want to just draw more highlight attention to as you can see here we just kind of drew some skinny lines in there blended it back with the red no big deal now we're going to come back to that men off white base and we're going to use ancient chinese technique right here and we're going to go through and do a couple of subtle highlights just by hand really simple make sure you have a little bit uh, a somewhat decent detail brush but something that holds a little bit of paint and we're just drawing some really simple lines you know going up and down vertically just try to like accentuate the natural detail that's already in the teeth drawing with the grain as opposed to dry brushing where we would go against the grain speaking of dry brushing here it is on the horn we're going to go against the grain with the dry brush technique Another uh, classic technique. I don't know what I was doing before I learned how to dry brush, but I know it wasn't good. Now we're gonna come right in with the GW technical line. This is one of my favorite new things, blood for the blood guy. This is a gloss. So you wanna make sure that you do all your seal coats first. This is the last thing you do on the model because you want this to dry gloss. You don't wanna wipe it out with your doko. And I'm going through on every little spot on these toads that I think should be bleeding like their huge disgusting mouths and some of the sores and some of the cuts. And I'm gonna just slather this on and then speckle it out a little bit. This is so easy to do. And you can see the final results speak for themselves. They are truly chaos. Now I wouldn't overuse this technique on non-chaos models, but like demons like this, I mean, look how nasty it looks in their mouths. These guys are terrifying, <laughs> you know? So it's fun to really slather it on on these types of demon models. I really think it adds something to the model. Uh, but definitely when it comes to your non-demon models, you want to be very subtle with it to just splatter it on some of the weapons and stuff like that. But you'll see, I am not afraid of it when it comes to chaos. These are disgusting little plague toads. They're vile. And we're going to slap these guys on 50 millimeter bases that I ordered special for them because I wanted to be able to use them as either a beast of Nurgle or a Nurgle spawn. Beast of Nurgle on 60 millimeter bases while spawn are on 40. So I feel like the gamer in me uh, will compromise with a 50 millimeter base as you can see here in the gallery pictures here They are their 50 millimeter bases Threw a little bit of tufts of grass on there. Call it a day Thanks for checking out this video players Thanks for checking out my channel don't forget to check out my archives for all of my past work. Also, Robbie B, one of my best friends of all time, has an amazing channel called Spiky Bits. Check it out if you got an opportunity. And of course, check out thelongward.net for exclusive content and early access videos. And of course, a podcast. Play on, players.